All right, look, if your goal is to be fat, sick, and unhealthy, simply do this. Follow the government's nutritional guidelines to the T. It's almost guaranteed to make you fat, sick, and unhealthy. Oh, Just, I know. Let's try and see if we can get canceled. Green <laughs> advice. <laughs> you know why? <laughs> why not? Why you know why? why you know why it's. You know why I said that? <laughs> I'll read to you. There was a tweet that is is going viral. Yeah. Um, and it's about protein intake. Okay. So first off, oh, I think I saw this. Did you see this? Wow. Yeah. Okay. This about so Vox is the person. Yeah, that's the people that did the tweet. But they're using the government guidelines, and this is what it says right here. Ready? Americans are obsessed with protein. They eat about two times as much of it as the federal government advises. And 60% of adults are trying to get even more of it into their diets. Ready for this? Excessive protein consumption could be making us sick. That's how you know you can lie, by saying could. could. It's also wrecking the planet. Uh-oh. Oh, wrecking it. You know what the protein recommendations are on here? Well, 50 grams. We'll go back to the very first 50, sentence. For the average read, that, read that first sentence again. I think it's just ironic. Americans are obsessed with protein. No, no, then the next one. They eat almost two times of mu as much of it as the federal government advises. As the federal government advises, right? So the federal <laughs> government advises us in nutrition. That's just so funny because if it was like, it was like another, matter, imagine another governing body and something that has nothing to do with that. It's like, uh, you know, scientists uh, saying something about how baseball players should practice their swing. Yes. It's like fucking nothing to do yes. with what, they, what they do. The right. government should have no say. Farmers with, in America think you should throw underhand in basketball. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. what I mean. It's like so you want, now here's governing the, body. Here's the hope. Here's the hope. Okay. I'm reading underneath the comments. Wow, dude. These are the comments underneath it. Yeah. The first one says you guys are a bunch of soy boys. That got, <laughs> that got a lot of likes. Then there's like, this is a blatant lie. You should be ashamed. Um, and then people hear, there's a doctor that gets on here. I'm a doctor. This is terrible advice. Another person, terrible advice, misinformation. 50 grams is not enough protein for an adult. Um, according to the federal government, we should be eating in a ridiculous amount of grains. So I'll disregard what they say. And it's like, down, you just keep going down and people are like, no, 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 no. I lost weight when I finally bumped my protein. This other guy says, I, I'm a doctor who's worked with many patients of Indian descent. We don't eat enough protein. Delete this. This is, this is it's, so that gives me hope. Yeah, that right. gives me hope that people are seeing this. People are waking up. But 50 least. grams of protein? I mean, that that's so um, that's so ridiculous because it's the complete opposite of what we've said on the show since the beginning. It's just like, I've never met a client, one, that eats enough protein. Right. So it's like, th this is the complete opposite statement. Protein it's is satiating. So one of the biggest challenges with uh, overeating is that you don't feel satiated, it's right? It's an essential macronutrient. It's essential. It's also satiating. Also, on a gram per gram basis, it re it results in more muscle gain and more fat loss. In other words, two diets that are identical in calories, but one that's high protein, a lot more than 50 grams, and another one that's what the RDA would say or whatever, would result in the high protein would result in fat loss it's and muscle gain. It's also connected with longevity. By the way, here's, my, here's another part that's awesome. The community notes, you know how X has like their fact checkers or whatever? The community notes on this were just were amazing. They said basically on there that the that older Americans will experience sarcopenia if they don't eat more protein. Yeah. And there was another then, then another note was eating uh, far more than this, and they put in parentheses close to one gram of protein per pound of lean body mass resulted in more muscle gain um, and fat loss. So you, one one of the easiest ways for me to help uh, somebody break through a plateau. Okay, and we and we talk about you guys hear us on the show all the time talk about how um, you know when you had somebody who was trying to lose weight how we would tell them to add things into their diet instead of saying restrict, like yeah. the, the psych psychology of that. One of the fastest things or fastest ways that I can show somebody like immediate results almost always is by bumping their protein when I after I assess their diet. After I have somebody actually track and look at what they're doing, like I have someone, like I, I shared the story the other day about my, my mom's husband, um, and this happens all the time where I'm talking to somebody and they're like, Adam, I've been working out four or five days a week and I've been doing this and I eat good. And then I go, okay, well then walk me through your day yesterday. And like, oh, I had, you know, two eggs for breakfast. And then I have, you know, a lean, you know, turkey sandwich. And then I have, you know, a big chicken breast dinner. And it's like, okay, cool. You had about 65 grams of protein. You're about 50 under what you need every day. Add a protein shake a day. Don't do anything else. Just, just take that yeah. one piece of advice and boop. Right through a plateau, yeah. right yep. there. The key just simply that unlocks it. Yeah. And by times. the way, by the way, I want to say I want to add to that because someone's going to take that wrong. It's not. It's adding a protein shake 
it's the extra protein. Uh, yes. Through whole natural foods would be ideal. Right. That'd of be course. the ideal way to do of it. Of course, of course. Yeah, no, it's it's terrible advice uh, to cut your protein. And now this is the this is what really frustrates the hell out of me. There, there, there's this propaganda machine that's coming out with nutrition. And nutrition's always been riddled with propaganda and lies and stuff like that. But they're tying it to morality. Yeah. They've now connected it to if you eat these foods, uh, you are a bad person and you're killing everybody because you're killing the earth. Yeah. No, this this is such a, a terrible lie because the worst possible thing we could do for the planet and for the for for humanity is have a bunch of sick, depressed, anxious, overweight people. We want healthy people who have good moods, who don't feel anxious, who have good mobility, who aren't reliant on all these medications, who are productive. That's what we want. That's how the world gets better. Not with a bunch of sick people. And if you take everybody and you yeah. just have them eat fifty, you know what's gonna happen. If everybody right now in America cut their protein down so they ate no more than 50 grams, first off, they'd make up for it with way more calories from other foods. They would lose muscle, most likely, and they would get worse. They would get sicker and fatter. They'd lose muscle and they get fatter as a result. Yeah, it just seems like it, it directly parallels what we saw, the progression of politics with whichever candidate they're presenting as being <clears throat> either you're voting for Satan or <laughs> yeah. you're voting for, you know, the savior. <clears throat> and it's like, it made its way into our, our nutrition and um, meat consumption as being this, like, you know, you're a murderer and like, you're this or that, even though uh, this has been happening since the beginning of time, because it's, it's obviously is bioavailable. It's something that's, you know, gives us sustenance um, and to, to, you know, just, label it like that is is doing more harm than good well i've always liked the the example of like the the alone show that we talk about you know it's like oh, yeah that is an example of like what your body I found some berries you know? yeah and, and there's always and there, every season every season that they do there's always somebody who can't catch a can't catch fish or can't kick, get game not because they're choosing to eat that way because they desperately would love to get uh, there's nobody I've ever seen on there that's an, a vegan. The vegan would be an automatic. Like, a vegan knows better to even try and play on that show, right? Yeah. But the, even the people that are desperately trying to eat meat, that are that are like you know living off the berries and twigs and stuff like that, it's only a matter of time before they're uh, deathly sick and they have to get kicked off the the off the island or off the show. You yeah, know? I've said this before. So people are like, okay, why the propaganda? W what is it? Why would they propagandize nutrition in this way. There's all a, the money there's, always. Yeah, there's a couple reasons. One is uh, politically expedient, so you can start to demonize a certain side and identify it as these types of people eat meat, these people don't, whatever. It also reinforces the, you know, how climate change and the environment has become so heavily politicized, so it helps reinforce that now they've attached diet to it. But really, here's where the money is. Heavily processed foods are largely not made from meat. And if they are, they're still patented. Remember, processed foods can be patented and protected. You can profit a lot off of profit off of uh, heavily processed foods. Right. Somebody can't go make a Lay's chip and turn around and sell it. They've already got all the... All the right, right, right. So that's why potatoes, growing potatoes, small margins, making a sp special potato chips, you know, much better margins. So they want people to not eat foods that are not patented. And, and if at some point I can imagine they're going to probably GMO a cow and figure out way, you know, out a way to do that as well. And they'll say something like this cow is, you know, farts less or something. So it's better for the environment. <laughs> or something like that. But yeah. that, but I mean, really it's follow, it's follow the money. And you look at where all this land is being purchased and how they're trying to manipulate the market. And it's, it's just not good. And then the whole, like, it's bad for the climate uh, situation. I just saw an article that said that um, growing your own food contributes to carbon carbon emissions and something like that should be discouraged people growing food in their gardens they're going to demonize yeah it's like they can dis they're it's a but it's a, a disempowering message the goal is to disempower people so this is just crazy to me that they said that yeah. so i went on there i had to repost it and it got so many views and and comments because people are like this is wrong that's, that's not what i've experienced whatsoever yeah, yeah. i feel so much better yeah. eating more protein Today's giveaway is the Super Bundle. If you want to win that, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. We're also running a sale right now on some workout programs. MAPS Performance is half off and our Extreme Fitness Bundle, which includes MAPS Hit, MAPS Performance, MAPS Prime, and the Intuitive Nutrition Guide is also 50% off. You can find all of those if you click on the link at the top of the description below.
All right, back to the show. This is a little bit off subject, but I just think talking about this stuff is like as far as health and longevity, it's got me thinking in that in that that vein. I was uh, with that group I told you this last weekend, and one of the guys is like a longevity person and stuff like that. That he's got a company that's built around longevity, and he has you could tell he has this like fear of dying, and like he just wants to he wants to live forever. You know, like why can't we, why can't we figure that out? Like why can't we figure that out? Do you think that's going to be the the answer of what solves uh, the depopulation, right? The fact that we are <laughs> losing, we're, 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 if we were to set, head down this path, right? Like, and keep going the way we're going, like we, we talk about how, how many people are going to be falling off, but maybe the thing that saves us is as in the next 20 to 30 years, we, we find a way to extend life by, you know, 10 to 20% on the average American. Does that solve that problem? You think? No, because Why? here's the problem with depopulation. You need productive working people uh, to support the people who are older and let's say retired. Need more care. Yeah. Right. So, okay, everybody's living longer. Are they going to agree to work longer? Are they going to are they going to allow us to oh, get I think, rid of the retirement age? Oh, I think so. I think that's part of it. Obviously, okay, if you if we extend You think the average per, you think right now if a politician came out and said, Hey, we want to take social security retirement age, which is what, sixty two and a half? Is that what it is, Doug? I believe so. Okay. Yeah. We want to raise that to 72 and a half. They will not get elected. No, no, no. I don't uh, think, I don't think that's. Did you see Nikki Haley say something similar to that? No. Oh, recently? Yeah. She was getting some pushback. Yeah. Uh, because, yeah, it was like, it's going to reflect our, our new like extension basically of, yeah. of, of life. So. I mean, it's it, okay. So you, you just conflated two things you're talking about politics now. Well, that's the, that's the that problem is, with depopulation. I mean, no, I mean, it's on the, nobody is going to, nobody who gets, that gets a free ride or gets anything as a handout or security is going to be like, yeah, I want less security or yeah, I want to work even harder for that. Of course not. That's not going to work, but it doesn't matter. We're moving in that direction anyways. We're moving to a place where you're going to need a 40 year mortgage or a 50 year mortgage to be able to afford it. We're, mo we're moving to a place now where you're going to have to save more, work more to be able to afford the same things that you did just two decades ago. So it's moving in that direction, regardless of what Social Security does or doesn't do. I don't think that matters. Well, no, that does, it doesn't matter. Yeah, but the question is, is it going to solve the problem? Yeah, of the depopulation. The problem of depopulation is not that there's less people. It's that there's not enough people less to support able, people. Able, able people. Yes. Okay, so that's, I, I don't, I see, I disagree with that. I think that when we, the things that we're learning, like with the stem cells and stuff like that, and I'm having Dr. Khan on here, like, that, that isn't going to just extend life. That's going to make people that in their 60s and 70s feel like they're in their 30s and their 40s. That's the idea of all that stuff of doing stem cells and giving you all this. So it's going to. So when you when people are feel old and decrepit in, right now at, on average and they don't feel like they can work anymore, they're going to feel like they still can and a, are able. So, yeah, I think that solves Yeah, but that. who's going to pay for the stuff that's going to make them live longer? Who's going to pay for this type of like these treatments and stuff? That's so... My point is it's not going to solve the the problem that's presented by depopulation, which is the cost of support, the cost of care, the cost of whatever. And also, like I like I know a lot of healthy, able-bodied 62-year-olds, you ask them, "Hey, can we we're going to extend social security so you, or or the age so you don't get your retirement benefits?" No. I don't want to do that. It's just so that's the problem. The problem is we need more people who are productive to support the people who are dying. Otherwise, so here's here's the deal. All government systems as we know it will collapse. That's the problem. The problem isn't that there's less people. The problem is society as it's organized isn't going to work. So we have to figure out an alternate way to set it up or have more kids. People are going to have to have more kids. The problem is too, the more educated we get and the more money we make, the less kids we have. That's always the case, which opens up the whole like, well, maybe this is why, you know, they want so many people coming in to make up the difference. That's not why they want which people come in. Well, <laughs> that's one argument. Yeah. <laughs> the other argument is they're getting voters. Is what that yeah, sure, is. Sure, <laughs> sure. That's that's one argument, right? But yeah, so that's that's the big um, that's the big thing. And and it, I mean, it's good that you're bringing this up because a lot of people think that the problem is just too many people, but that's not uh, what's going to be the issue in the next. You know, no, the four, you know, four or five population decades. is a major issue, and there's plenty of people that are speaking out on it because it's ridiculous to think that we thought the other way. Anybody thought the other way at one point. Did you know? But by I the do, way, they're I, still promoting. That. I do yeah, think the thing that's going to bridge that gap for us, though, is the is longevity. 
is that we in our life look at what we're seeing right now we're just i mean with the even in our within our own circle of people like the dr cons people are going to live long they have to, sure. yeah. it's true but they have to change like the model has to change because People the, the, living longer is actually adding to the problem. I mean, it always does. Because they want people to die. It always does, though, Sal, right? I mean, that's all part of, uh, that's how we've evolved as a society. Like, it's never the same. Like, everything evolves and changes, and we we will adapt. You don't think we will adapt? No, I, I do. I just don't think okay. that by itself will solve the problem. I think there's going to be some 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 interesting. Well, if, okay, so the, if we adapt, like, I think we will, yeah. and change the way we do things as a system and as a society, if we have, if we increase everybody's age by ten to twenty percent, and when I say increase age, also productivity and and how healthy they feel, ten to twenty percent yeah, more, yeah. that would I think that would be a boom. I think if people didn't even live longer, if they just lived better, you know what I mean? If they, yeah, if and I think we're that on the, would make. A don't huge you difference. feel like we're on the verge of that? It's all getting worse. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I so guess we'll go to the bottom to get out. Okay, yeah, now that's fair. So, through. so yeah, what I think worse. we're seeing, it's funny. Is I, I feel like we're seeing the same discrepancy in, uh, you know, economics as we are yeah. in, in health. Yeah. Right. So there's like it's as, a wider gap. Yeah. The, as, as there's getting, we have we have richer people now and poorer people now, and the same thing goes for we we're getting healthier type people while we're also getting sicker people. So I think it is. There's this this gap that's happening, but there is going to be a percentage of that. I'd like to see that data. That'd be interesting to see because we're not we don't have poorer people. Everybody's richer. The difference between someone who's is the gap. Poor, is, yes. yeah, that's what I but mean. But everybody's by, moving. That's up. what I mean by yeah, that. Yeah, is yeah. not so. You're right. We're not getting. You know, there's now, not somebody. Medical who's, care is getting more advanced, but people are getting sicker. And life expectancy is shortening, even though we're we're better at solving. Yeah, but part of that emergency. part of that is, I believe, that the medical system is is designed to keep you in. I also think keep people, you sick. Yeah, and I also think that so not to cure you. We're just not moving. We're indoors. We're not sleeping well. We're not exercising. You know the whole deal. And our diets are totally. Well, I think up. that's the gap is people that are still trusting the old guard. You know, the old medical system versus people that like we're basically like skeptical now because of how everything kind of transpired is like, I need to do my own research. I need to advocate for myself. And there's a big movement happening with that right now, yeah. which I think is, is one definitely the, a swing in the other direction. One of the best things look like, here, I'm, I'm not, so obviously I'm like, you know, stay out of it. Government we will figure this out, but there's one thing I think that government can do. And that's mainly because this is what they, this is nobody else really does this. If they redesigned cities because they're the ones that organize cities for the most part. If they redesign cities to make them like cities More were designed. Different, different, yes. Yeah. Because if you look at obesity and you look at health and you compare uh, like older cities where people have to walk a lot, where mm -hmm. buying a car is just doesn't work. Like they're doing the Dubai one? Yeah. Yeah, like that? Yeah. Well, I don't know about that. That's kind of, that's really oh, that's, extreme. That's the one that's like really like yeah. indoors and yeah, it's the, mirrored yeah. out. The idea okay. is that you you don't need a car to yeah. get from one to like the, everything's like a speed rail thing yeah. and walk. And, and, but like if you live in like San yeah. Francisco, like I have family, besides all the problems San Francisco has, but I have family that lives there. And the, like they get rid of their cars. So like it's worthless to having a car. I can't park it anywhere. It costs too expensive to park it. Yeah. yeah. So I just walk and then the hills and stuff and you just, you just movement goes through the roof. Do you think we, do you think San Jose ends up being like that at one point? Do you think we grow to that it's point? so spread out. How would that work? Yeah. Cause it's like houses and then like businesses way over here. Like how would that work? So it have, have to be redesign. a restructure yeah, of, of, of buildings and like how to kind of maneuver. Yeah, 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 totally. You know, you're talking about the Pretty longevity cool and stuff like that. Did you see, uh, you know, and speaking of Dr. Khan, you see he's got a longevity um, uh, it's like a conference. Yeah, a conference that's yeah. coming Unlock up. Unlock Longevity, it's called. It's in uh, Texas. Is that where it's at? Austin, Austin yeah. Yeah, yeah. Austin, Texas. What, what are the dates on it, Doug? February 24th. Oh, it's like around the corner. Yeah, it's like all our friends are speaking. It's really, yeah, I saw Ben it Greenfield, Green, Tom Bilyeu. Tom's, Bilyeu. Tom's on there. I'm really, what, does it say what Tom is talking about? Well, yeah, the like, to his topic is the ultimate adaptation machines. So humans. Oh no, AI stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he's yeah, as I say, he's yeah. he's not going to be one that's going to be talking about health, no, longevity. That's no. interesting. So he's going to go on like the AI direction. Uh -huh. I see. Ben will talk that way. Do uh, Dr. Connell will talk that. Who else is Dave Asprey's going to be talking? Asprey is there. Yeah, Dr. Now Dr. Sal's buddy. Huh? Now did you get his number? Sal's did you, best buddy. Did you get a chance <laughs> no, to text him? Yeah, uh, okay, make sure you tell Katrina. Make sure you can you can text yeah, him like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be great. That'll be interesting. I can't wait to see what they talk about. Yeah, no, over there. No, no, no. That'll be cool for and, sure. And what that looks like. As of right now, nothing comes close when it comes to longevity, uh, to proper activity, good diet, good sleep, and good relationships. I don't think 
it's, I don't. I don't know. I don't know how they're going to solve. You know, I don't I mean? think that'll ever change, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think. I don't think we're ever going to hack into something that makes you get like. Like it's that's embedded same. in our DNA. I mean, our body benefits from those things. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, I guess too. That's I think that's you know, I I I believe in a higher power, and I believe that He created us a certain way, and and the, these are some, these are and like you try to deviate from it. You, it exactly. I, and maybe maybe we can find ways to help or assist or bro, I watched, short hacks, but it ain't the answer. I watched this funny episode of uh, Rick and Morty. Made me think about it. Rick and Morty's is like so total stoner cartoon. It's hilarious. Yeah, but there's an episode where they could. They can they can make their subconscious. They could sleep at night, but then like a, their subconscious would wake up and do stuff for them at night. So they could wake up and, and then they know how to play the piano or whatever. So Morty he wants to get jacked, so he goes to sleep and then his subconscious wakes works up out. and works out. <laughs> so he wakes up. He's got six. Pounds. I think that would be the only way. Like if somebody could like work out but be unconscious, you know what I mean? Like they take a nap and just, you know. I mean that would be then they're consistent. That would be that would be hilarious <laughs> to do that. I mean, imagine if you could just program yourself to to do that. Oh, you know, speaking of that, you got me thinking about. It. So again, I was talking to this guy who's he's he's obviously hardcore in the longevity thing and all these different things. Do you know that you can you can clone your dog for twenty thousand dollars? Yeah, I've heard it's about legal. That. Yeah, was it Japan that it started, or they, I remember it was we, they do, first, they do it in the states. It it's the in the states, states now. In the wow. states, so it's, let me ask it's, you guys: it's legal this. to do would that. that. Be how would you feel about that, bro? Okay, so I want you. You lost your dog. Uh, yes, I hope somebody on here on air has done it so they can talk to me because I'm really curious. Because, but would you feel weird because like, bro, it's not can, him, but it's a doesn't clone. matter if like okay. Obviously, anybody who's had a dog that they're or a pet that they're they were really attached to, when you lose them, it's it's terrible. like yeah, it's terrible, right? Yeah. And if I could have another bulldog that literally looks just like mine and it has the personality of mine, to where it's but almost would it make you feel weird. It's yeah, not him. I mean, did does it play out like that with their personality? That's what, so that's what I want. I mean, if it's cloning their DNA, you would think that it, it would, or pretty damn close. So that's the part I want to talk. I want to talk to somebody and be like, listen, you got your dog cloned for this twenty yeah. grand. Is it, does it feel like it's the same exact, not just the way it looks. That's not impressive yeah. to me. Like, okay, yeah. cool. I, cause I could go find a dog that's in the same gene pool that it's like. It's going to have the so, same genetic propensity yeah, it's for gonna, personality, it's, but the experiences will be different. So sure. Be different. Sure. There might be some things that are changed yeah. a little bit, but boy, if it, does it come off? But like, would that make you feel weird just to like raise it up and be like, well, you're not, you're not, the, you're not my dog that died, but you're. So because it's my dog. I think that it would be less. My son, I couldn't do that with. Yeah. That would be weird, yeah. and that would bother me knowing that it didn't like come for me like yeah. that. But because it's a pet that you purchase, oh, you think people are gonna do that with people at one of point? Of course, bro. You lose a family oh, member, and dude. they'll just clone it so you can raise of it again. Of course. Oh, that'll be weird, dude. Of course, that's coming. Does that make you feel weird? Yeah, that's just unnatural. And, but <laughs> you know it's coming, though, don't you? You have to know that's coming. And the first step is this. That's why I want to talk to somebody who's experienced it. Imagine can, if you were the clone. You know, you grow up and, you're, and they're like, we cloned you off of, you know. What movie is that? George oh, yeah, died. There's, there's, there's he a died, he died yeah. in a car accident, but we missed him. So we brought him back and it's you, you know, you're the same genetic, but you're different, right? And I'd be like, fuck. So, cool. I mean, okay. when you guys, when you, and I know you're into all these shows. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> so we'll go down to your rabbit <laughs> hole for I'm just going to stay over here and wait till you guys finish. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm going to, because I know you, this is the stuff that you watch. Like yeah. the show upload, the show the upload, upload yeah, right? I love that show. So do you think we're more likely Gonna go that route or the like the cloning route, right? So the the difference is this, Sal. If you're not yeah. aware of where I'm going with this, well, is that upload is like you basically upload your consciousness into another meat bag. Well, let's right? just talk about, I guess, what I've read and whatever, like in terms of like where we've got so far with technology and so like because the big push too is to figure out consciousness and like how to kind of yeah. place your consciousness somewhere else. Um, and be able to upload it or, um, you know, have that sort of within a digital space or, or whatever. But so apparently there was some experiment where, and, and I know that you've probably seen this where um, across, um, I think it was in Europe, um, somebody from the States was controlling and manipulating like a robot's hand and was able to um, consciously tap into that neurologically. Oh, right. And so they've actually progressed that to the point of like you could control um basically kind of jack in almost like it was your avatar yeah. to a robot and was actually able to move it and manipulate it around and so they're like really close to kind of figuring out how to then transmit your consciousness into uh let's say it's a clone or let's say it's like it's like it's a body a vessel there's a there's a philosophical problem here that can't there's it's impossible to answer which is if we could perfectly upload your consciousness to another clone or robot 
would it actually be you? Or would you just think it was, would it would just think it was you? In other words, so the, the, if the, you woke up and you're a robot, you're like, no, it is me. But is it really? Is it really you? You see what I'm saying? There's no way to determine that. I mean, yeah. That'd be terrifying. Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, the the spiritual godly side of me goes like, that's, we, we that's we're meddling. We, yeah. Well, and we're also, we're, that's what we are is we're software, right? Our consciousness and our soul is, is the software. Our body is the hardware. Right. Yeah. And so absolutely, if you took my software out and you put it you in some of the- copied it. Yeah, that's me. Like, is it, yeah. is it you or is it a copy is my point? Yeah. No, Cause it would think it was you. Yeah. You guys ever watch that Black Mirror episode where there was an AI assistant yeah. that you could get? That was you. It was it was a clone of your consciousness, but it was it, so it was you. But it was trapped in the phone. It's like, hey, let me out, and you're like, no, no, no yeah. you're my assistant now. You know me better than anybody, so you're gonna work for me. I don't want to work for you. And then they they'd hit pause, and it would and the the clone in the phone, the AI clone, who thought it was that person trapped in the phone, experienced six months of silence, yeah. six months stuck in a room as a punishment, oh. and then came out. I'll do whatever you want or whatever. And you watch it, and you're just like, oh, that's so weird it's yeah. such a twisted well, it just weird. Sa it it such sounds a good like job on that yeah show. it sounds like nonsense you know it sounds like, like why are you guys even talking about this stuff and, and meanwhile like meanwhile, technology is moving so <laughs> quickly like it's going to be on our doorstep we're gonna have to reconcile Bro. this we can't catch up morally or ethically no. to what's happening no and I, I guess that's really where my uh it's my it's my like stress and my like anxiety is really just like the the moral and the ethical side that just has been Does it bro 100 we, we we are barely right now figuring out the moral and ethical repercussions of allowing ipads to raise our children mm -hmm. that we're like that took and that took a d two decades basically yeah. of that Even experiment. Though intuition uh, with most people are like this is probably not beneficial but you don't have that kind of concrete evidence to point to. It's like, but it, that's why you got to really listen to uh, yourself listen, a lot of times. Listen, we are dealing with moral and ethical repercussions of all kinds of things that technology has created that humans have never experienced, like pornography, dating sites, like having access to, like, you know what, like dating sites and apps on its surface, if you don't think about it from a moral standpoint, right, or or philosophical standpoint, you're like, well, this is great. I have more options. I can meet more people. This was supposed to be this incredible way for people to connect. Instead, what's happened is 1% of the men on there, literally, get all the attention from 97% percent of the women, and all, and the rest of the men are completely invisible. And it's literally created this very strange was dynamic. It, That's the data. Was it you yeah. who said you had somebody that you wanted to bring on that was like a, a porn hub? Yeah, some yeah. pornography expert on the on its on the. Yeah, you the know it's so funny. You not a porn hub. <laughs> yeah, not a, not a porn hub expert. <laughs> like it. I was so I was on there last night with Katrina and her and I were tripping out that huh? this yeah on Pornhub okay yeah that's I what, thought you yeah, said yeah. that but go so ahead. We were, and I you know I like and, literally and, on there yeah or like you well it? no watching it okay. right so oh, yeah. and, and admittedly I've talked about how I I was never like a a, a sure. big porn watcher like yeah I had the videos this and that here sure. and there and occasionally to dip in but it's never been like a, a struggle for sure, me sure, right sure. um so her and I have been happened to be on there and it hadn't been in a, a long time since the last time or whatever like that. And one of the things we were going through, like uh, all the um, stars, right? So there's this category where you can go in there. And uh, she's like, is that what I think? Is that B stand for? I think I said, I said, yeah, that is like, they get billions of views oh, per video. Yeah. Billions. Billions. Wow. And on lots of them and most of yeah. them like and, and that, that that really brought into perspective to yeah. me because when what you look other at, videos on youtube or anything even bro, scratch you, that surface if you get in the hundreds of millions wow. in you are the most viral thing that you're, have you're ever mr beast yes yeah. on youtube and YouTube is massively and accepted by everybody. So what does that tell the you? Damage Mr. Beast on Holy, the damage is caused. The damage. Another thing. The damage that pornography is causing is one of the most un, you know, undiscussed, um, just dangers that's happening. It is completely warping and twisting people's minds, and it has, and it it, it does get the brain to adapt in the way that drugs do, and yeah. they're showing this, and it molds the brain in the way that drugs do, and it's changing how people are relating to each other and connecting. Not listen in all of human history, never did any single person have that much access to that much novelty of stimulus. Oh, yeah. You could be a king, you could be a, the king of uh, the, the the emperor of Rome two thousand years ago. You would did not have even close to the access of novelty that a fifteen year old kid yeah. on their iPhone has. Yeah, that's 
that is causing some serious problems and nobody's talking about it. And, and that's the, the, nobody's talking about it and how crazy it is was the thing that I think that really triggered that for me. It was Do you know like, what? Holy you shit. You know what's wild? So my research billion. on trying to find something. I don't even think, right? wow. tell me if you can find a I've video seen a on, on like YouTube that. with a bee next to it. I don't yeah. think that even exists. That's crazy. And I'm telling you guys, like I was like going. Lots of them. Lots of them. Like wow. lots of them on billions of views. What? That, yeah, that's that's wild. Chew on that for a second. That's and yeah. then when you think of like a platform like YouTube that is as popular and as massive, to think that it's like and that's one platform. Yeah. Do you know that the the, the I, I because I was trying to find I'm trying to find an expert to come on right. Do you know that that what they're so there's people that are that are studying this now because now it's been around long enough. Internet porn has been around long enough where they can see data. It's trending everybody towards more extreme and more novel type uh, uh, visual imagery. So whereas the porn used to be look a particular way, it's getting more and more crazy and violent and extreme mm. and, and what they would call unnatural. Baby shark, 10 billion views. Oh, okay, <laughs> Baby go. shark, he's got the all record. Right, huh? right, right. <laughs> Is that the record, Andrew? Basically all the kids... Coco Melon, Baby Shark. Okay. They're all like six billion. Okay, well, now, whoa. Kids okay, wait, their wait. IPad on all the day bro, that's, like okay, this. so trip on that for a second. The two things in our worse. society that are getting yeah. the most is these is pornography and probably mostly young adults of that. And then yeah. this shit right here, Coco Melon type shit for children. Yeah. So it's like there, there's no there's no rules or boundaries, and you're just handing them this tool just and letting them hits just letting the them go. Yeah. That's crazy. I know. Dude. I'd never. So that, that's really wild to think about it like that. Is that you've got this, which is obviously a, a, appealing to under five year year old, five year olds, which is getting the most views on YouTube than anything else, and then you have pornography that's in the billions of views. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, that's wild. That that's is wild. that is crazy. Yeah, I man. can't wait to have someone come on, like I said, and talk about. Yeah, can you? Causes. Since you're in this one, you're looking around. I'm just, now. I'm just curious because we're talking about this. Well, like what the total amount of monthly views of pornography is like uh, of all pornography yes oh, per God. month i don't even think they can oh uh, i mean they get an idea per right? day I yeah think or that or yeah give me give me the amount of views that uh, how, how much like uh, pornography content is, is viewed per day or per month <laughs> just uh, just to put it into perspective of yeah. how many humans are on the earth and this and that or on you know the, what's wild is that uh how how willingly people are to deny the potential dangers of something be simply because it's so popular and they like it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like it exploded. Our, that's our whole career, like talking yeah. to people about food and stuff. I know. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's like, yeah, I mean, I mean so much that there's even in the fitness space a counter movement to like, don't demonize food. It's yeah. like, stop it, dude. This is not ideal for them. Yeah, like, it's this yeah. packaged wrapper <clears throat> bullshit that's all, like, it's, it's, it's all moral relativism. Let's, let's, like, like, and I'm not saying fucking that, that you can't ever have or indulge in something like that every once in a while, but it's like, let's stop fooling ourselves to thinking that it's totally that innocuous. No, that's morally relevant or the, to yeah. everything. Yeah. To so the top three porn sites have 5.81 billion site views uh, of visits every month. <sighs> wow. I can only assume they're watching more than one video. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. That's 5.6 5. 5. 5. Yeah. on all three of them. So 15 something billion views. Yeah. Total. That's combined. 5.81 billion for all of them combined for the top three. For the top three. Oh, okay. Yeah. Back okay. in the but day, that's, it was that's, just that's, so, how many, that's site visits, though. Site. Yeah. Oh, that's people going to the that's site. That's people going to the site. Oh, videos. They, oh, they could watch five. Yeah, six. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Jesus. Wow. Yeah, that's not How even many one. billions of people on earth? Seven? Uh, eight. Around eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, what a bit you you are basically capturing everybody a month everybody that's yeah. wild that's scary yeah that is that's wild. scary that's a monster yeah you know and so it, I, I, I hope you get somebody to come on because i do want to talk to him now just i'm just so curious to like what that it's like so has so grown over the last <laughs> like what does that trajectory look like in the last decade or two? Oh, it has to have been on like a, a crazy I, listen, trajectory. listen, I'm a grown, I'm a grown man. I did not grow up with this, uh, like kids do these days. I, I couldn't imagine being a 15 year old kid with full, just unadulterated access to my, to the internet and having that accessible today. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine what, that I don't know if I, I don't think I, even with my, um, you know, the way I was raised values and stuff like that. I don't, I don't think I would have, have resisted it. I think I would have indulged. How? I would have for sure as a, as a I teenage mean, boy who doesn't. Yeah. Cause you're not thinking. And then how did you think it would have shaped your brain? 
Yeah. Remember, the brain is shaped that way. They talk about imprinting mm -hmm. uh, and stuff like that. Like it's that's that's wild, man. That's yeah. crazy when you think about it. It's scary. Yeah. Speaking of uh, speaking of which, I had my vasectomy to <laughs> check up yesterday. <laughs> Great whatever, transition. You know. <laughs> Does your shit still work? I don't know if you're going <laughs> <laughs> to go that direction. Yeah, speaking of climax. Uh, uh, speaking uh, of, uh, no, I went. It was it was operation. not it was not the vasectomy. It was the like consult. So they they do a consult with you to check if you're to see if you're serious about it, uh, and they do a quick check or whatever. And then apparently in California, I don't know this, that <laughs> consult lasts for six months. Checking under the hood. But yeah, that lasts for six months. You have to get your vasectomy within six months. Otherwise, you have to do another consult. Yeah. What? I think it's to prevent like people changing their mind or suing them or something yes. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They want you to know, know you're really. Yeah. Doesn't that make you concerned a little bit of this? That symbol, that, well, I have four kids. I think people change their mind because then they say people change their mind. All yeah, the time. I want to have kids. Yeah, yeah. I've got I, four yeah, kids. Yeah, that's that would be my challenge. And I'm, right? You know, so but um, but I, the, I it's so it's so uncomfortable. I swear, I'm, I'm in there. <laughs> doctor walks in. He's got an intern with him. So there's two guys. In there oh, now. two guys. Yeah. So now I got doctor wow. and intern. Pizza guy. Yeah. yeah and he's like, in. all right, yo, I'm going to check you. Yeah. Just pull pull down your pants. I'm like, uh, okay. They pull yeah. them down. And he's like, they're holy both, shit. They're both, they're both looking. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get in here. Yeah. yeah. Get, get, hey, Steve, come hey, here. Steve, we got more interns. Take a look at this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, bring we a magnifying glass with you when you oh, come here. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, come on. <laughs> yeah. We got hey, yeah. we got we got, a, we got a class visiting right now. I was learning about this. You guys want to come in? Everybody want to come in real quick? Yeah, there's two of them. Yeah, that's but it's, yeah. All, it's always uncomfortable, you know, because you're sitting there as a dude like all, yeah, you're no, manipulating you and you're yeah. just like, uh, don't make eye contact, you know, yeah, yeah. the whole time or whatever. What, what is it? Uh, you probably have read something study wise like that. What is it about men that we just resist doctor's office so much? What is that? Because that's not, oh, women are like. You had a control. Yeah, they have to like punt, push us into I think the it, doctor's yes, office. It's, it's the same reason why we like the remote control. Maybe we don't like to not be in control. Is that, come on, because there's there's women that yeah. like lots of control. And they're like, I don't, I don't feel like it's that. It's got to be something else. It's because I think it's because if you have a real like tight group of friends that just roast you all the time, you yeah. know, for anything, any snivelly, little whiny, little bitchy, complaining yeah, thing. Is it about being tough? Is yes. that what it is? I seriously think it's simply about being vulnerable. I think you don't want to sit there and be vulnerable and have somebody partially. tell you whatever. You but you don't also avoid, don't want to admit that. Well, you're those are kind sick. of the, they're both probably right because it's kind yeah. of the same thing, and I agree with both. If, of you. Like, if, it's, if, like I want, it's like a toughness. Here, vulnerable thing. they fear an embarrassing diagnosis, and sometimes because of the stigma, many men believe they should be strong enough to handle things on their own. Oh, so it's yeah, so it's a combination. We avoid our feelings. We avoid Just any rub of some shit. cream so, on it. Yeah, so yeah, some so tussing. I, yeah, some tussing. So I got this chest pain. How many times have you heard this? Like, oh, you know, I got you know, I've had this chest pain. You know, what do you, what kind of exercise? Like, how long have you had that chest pain? I don't know, like three months, kind of lose my breath yeah. a little bit. Busy. <laughs> Bro, what the fuck? You <laughs> have a heart attack, guy. Go to the doctor, dude. What are you talking about? Yeah. You know? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm Oh, I'm bad, bro. You have to like drag me in for sure. I like, know. Yeah, yeah. I got to be pretty bad to go to go the doctor. When's the last time you went to the doctor? I can't remember. Dude, really? Kaiser calls yeah, me like remember. literally three times a week. That's because you're obese on the scale, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to see if I'm still alive. <laughs> He's on the, it's, on it's, the we BMI have this new scale. bariatric treatment. Hear did me you, out. Did you say they tried to get you in a, an yeah. obesity class or something? Yeah. 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 <laughs> literally, like you. Look at me. Never yeah. even like made eye contact with yeah. me. And is like writing this off. Like I'm obese. How'd you feel about that call? So what happened? You I mean, I remember when that happened to me too, dude, because those stupid BMI things are so, was like, excuse so me? they're so <laughs> skewed. <Yeah. laughs> and it was worse when I was even bigger, you know, more fit. You know what I'm saying? I was, I was even leaner and more fit than I was before. It was like, Oh yeah, you're obese on here. Get out of here with that. Yeah, because thing. of the weight yeah, thing or whatever. Stop. And so did, what'd you get? Did you get a call? And they're just like, Hey, yeah, letter first. For and I laughed and then I got a call as a follow-up and was like basically trying to pitch me like all these benefits and you know <laughs> i could lose 20 pounds and you know this hey, is what we're gonna do hey if you were like, get if, the fuck out of here if you were <laughs> if you were still trying to train people yeah i would have gone just to get clients yeah you know what i mean yeah. Yeah. just show up just vlog yeah. the whole thing just you know? show up and just get in the class hey you know i, I train people if you guys want to if you guys you should see what i look like six months ago yeah. like, man <laughs> let me tell everybody. like you're obese not anymore yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I, I discovered a fat loss secret if you want to talk about it after class, dr dan <laughs> really knows what he's doing yeah, yeah. anyway five. all right i'll bring up the other thing which is the uh, the operation midnight Clam climax have you ever heard of this operation yes, I have midnight this. climax so, yes san yes. francisco you know about it, of course, it this know. is the cia i believe Believe, yes yeah bro. um god so you know everything with they drugged these johns 
uh, they basically gave him acid and they were doing these experiments. The uh, CIA did that to John? Through the, uh, uh, yeah, the prostitutes. Bro, listen to this. Okay, okay. This wait, wait. is real. Okay, so they, so they and the filmed it. The and prostitutes are, are giving the, the Johns. It's worse than you think. I it's know. Even yeah, worse than okay. <laughs> what, listen, you, listen. What this was, is, what, okay, what are they trying to solve? Can I know that first? It was the it? CIA had a sub, had a project called Project MK, MK Ultra. Ultra. Is all part MK and Ultra. what it was was to see can we use psychedelic substances to brainwash people, control their minds, get mm -hmm. them to do what we want, believe what they what we want. Okay. 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 So the government was like, we we want to figure this out because it's the cold so war. Let's use prostitutes. So they took yeah. it. Now they use TV. So this doctor, he was a chemist and he based his plan at a, a, a off of an interrogation method under another project called project artichoke operation. Midnight clients gave him permission to test drugs on unknowing citizens. Okay. Hund so he, they, there were scientists, field operatives, can I, can I agents. Just, can I just say, can I just how give, fun a job would that be? Hey, how how brilliant on their part of people who's not going to squeal? Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying they that. that's they're not. Yeah, they're not yeah, saying nothing. Yeah, well, they saying shit. Right, ready, ready for this. Okay. So he did do a lot of that. They dosed people in restaurants, bars, and beaches, um, and it was all happening in San Francisco. You ready for this? Here's the part that blew my mind. The extent to which this widespread exposure of the public to mind altering drugs. Remember, they were rare. You're talking about the 1950s, early 60s, like LSD and stuff like that. Like, people weren't really using them that Dude, much. Dude, they back attribute then. this to a bit of the hippie uh, Bingo. explosion. It was yeah. in San Francisco, and it says here wow. the extent to which this widespread exposure of the public to mind altering drugs contributed to the rise of the counterculture Counter movement in yeah. the late 50s and 60s is unknown. Although, Ken Kate Kesey has attributed his role in the genesis of the influential San Francisco Bay Area psychedelic social scene that developed in the 1960s to his participation in Project MK Ultra, including LSD experiments in Menlo Park, California, of course. VA hospital. Of course. So okay, they so may have started the whole psychedelic so movement wow, through the CIA. That makes sense. Okay, so does it go into like what they did? Okay, so they, they gave these Johns. No, not just Johns. It wasn't just Johns. Oh, it wasn't just Johns. We well, no. restaurant it was, and people. Like, it was fucking just people. Yeah. A you know, they I, would I go didn't to, hear about that. Yeah, restaurants, the bars, they would dose them and then watch what happened. And then they'd have someone go, a CIA person go, act like whatever, and see how they could you know, brainwash them, control them, whatever. Didn't was, they have, so they had some of the prostitutes like asking them certain questions. That's to the see, other one. Yeah, to see what information they could extract yes. and like how far they could So the one thing they that would they- go to give. The, the one bit that they released, it's all classified, they don't release any of it, but one bit that they released was that with sex and psychedelics, people are far more willing Way more to give vulnerable. up sensitive information. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, yeah I know. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah. like the old yeah. honey pot. I, I'm just pretty sure it's why my life, my wife likes to do it with us. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she knows I'm going to fucking tell her everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, you can't, you can't hold a secret after that, dude. Psychedelics masked with like with great sex is yeah. equals like clarity, pour yeah. out everything you have. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like literally. She's you, like, you know, this is a hack. After you're done, Adam's like, you know, I'm scared of the dark. Yeah. Like, oh, you yeah. 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 I'm really scared. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, okay, this needs to be a movie. Why haven't they made a movie? Of I'm that? surprised they haven't. Yeah, because I mean, I know that uh, too. There was a, a, that other book about like Charles Manson and how his ties in with MK Ultra and like yes. a lot of the creation of some of these serial killers. Now I are, do know, I do know that I didn't know it was tied to MK Ultra. I know that he used to use psychedelics to manipulate his flock of people, right? He sure. Yes, get him, but there's some there's the, people there's speculating that he's a plant. You know, that like he, a was, CIA he was he was CIA, CIA plant that they did that and had yes, a, yeah. yes. God. You know what's so crazy and scary it's, about that is it makes a lot of sense why someone with that would go to that, do that much crazy shit because you got the green light from the freak. Well, yeah, but he went to prison though. If he was part of that, he, we wouldn't have gone to prison. You don't think they're going to, yeah, he's I mean, not part of it like you work with the CIA. They no, pick they, him they, uh, uh, and then they use him. As, him. Exactly. Uh, uh, and so then, by the way. That useful idiot, right? No, yeah. bro. Listen, this is, uh, this is all, uh, this is all like real shit. Then there's the Tuskegee st <laughs> experiments. People don't know. Oh, this one, yeah, government actually up. officially came out and apologized for but they did this between 1932 and 1972. This was as late as the 1970s, where they infected African American men with syphilis. Yeah. The purpose of the study was to observe the effects of the disease when untreated. <sighs> they gave them syphilis without them knowing to watch and see 
what would happen? It's weird, that, it's weird that people had reserve about an experimental vaccine. <laughs> I swear to God, yeah. dude. Why, when mean, people why? are like, why don't you trust? It's like, come yeah, on, why dude. This is what they've everything. admitted. 40 years they did that for. 40 years, dude. bro. Over 400 men. How messed men. up is that? How messed up? They give you a disease and then they, and then here's the sad part. These men would go to the doctor to try and figure out what's going on and they wouldn't treat them because they're watching to see how it would unfold. How sad. Yeah. Isn't that terrible? It is terrible. I know. It makes yeah. me so sad. What's yeah. and what's crazy, you can't help but think, which is, you know, to Justin's jab and point there is just like, you know, what are they still doing? Oh. You know? Yeah. Who what knows? are they like? It's, do we all of a sudden think they had like, like it goes Jesus away in the eighties? Like the eighties, like hey, you know what? Let's become. Let's most, stop doing this shit. Yeah, we learn. We learn what they did like a decade ago. You know, like yeah. that's how like the information travels because of uh, what's that act with like the Freedom of Information yes. Act? Like, so I think it's twenty or thirty years. Yeah, now. it's like way f like uh, so in terms of like catching up to what they're doing now. Who knows? I, you know? had, I mean, think about it. Just because of how we've evolved, it has to be that much more insidious, right? It oh. just has to be. Oh yeah. Like it's not going to be like oh. Wow, they're getting savvy to the stuff that we do all these things. Well, like what's now, weird to me now we have to be like super. Here's covert what's weird or, to me: assassinations of influential or slash, you know, potentially radical, whatever, <coughs> um, you know, counterculture movement leaders used to happen all the time. They don't happen anymore. Mm -hmm. So, and all the time. I mean, John Lennon, Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. JFK, which they now, they, they won a lawsuit saying, oh yeah, he was the CIA, you know, caused that. Like you have all these, you know, uh, John F. K's, what is his brother? Um, uh, Robert Kennedy. Robert. Um, and I mean, so many, um, uh, Malcolm X, like all these people who got assassinated, who were counterculture, you know, type movement people or whatever, that doesn't happen anymore. So, so what happened? Yeah. All of a sudden these people stopped getting assassinated because people stopped trying to kill them or is did they change their tactics? Yeah, as I say, they found change a better way. Yeah, they found a different way, which is, I think, what you would, I mean. You know. I'm kind of interesting. Uh, this is different than all of that, but um, have you guys ever heard of the Sav to Savo Lions? I don't know how to pronounce that, but Savo Lions. Oh, no. So this was, you probably will once I bring it up, but basically, I think it was Kenya, but oh. they were the man-eating lions. Yes. And so- I Oh, was, yeah, yeah. That's in that uh, movie. The um, great movie with- uh, Yeah, I know what you're- Keith yeah. Sutherland, I think, is it? Is yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Are these the lines that, that killed like hundred people and they couldn't 135. catch them? One hundred and thirty-five. Yeah, and they're all building this railroad. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's so, do you know like what they kind of uh, deduced to as to maybe a, a possible theory as why that they were focused on uh, humans? I, to for eat them? I forget. Tell me, because humans so, are delicious. Yeah, they're delicious. But uh, so normally they eat big game, right? And and. So um, what they're thinking was one of them they found uh, on their two, like it was one of their um, their canines that had basically cracked. And so it was an infected. And so um, it was hard for for him to to eat bigger game and oh. to, to be able to kind of chomp through. So humans are easy. So humans were easier and like oh. more conveniently located. So they just start, uh, uh, you know, instinctively to start stalking humans because they're an easier prey. But normally they're into bigger game, yeah. uh, but the, so they think that that was probably why. And then it created sort of this, um, oh wow, that was learned behavior. Learned behavior, so we can we can wow. keep uh, making this a, a a food source. I forget what the what they depicted in the movie. That's a good movie, by the they way. They eventually too. hunted them down. It's, right? it's Val Kilmer. Down That's who it is. Them. It was Val Kilmer, and it's something in the darkness. Ghost yes. in the darkness. Ghost in the darkness. Ghost in the darkness. Oh, that yes. movie is based. That. That, Michael oh, Douglas. That was well. a good movie. Michael Douglas that. and Val Kilmer, and it, it's based off that true story because they actually wow. dropped that those stats you, that you just. Do you said. know what Predator will? If you see it, it's almost always for sure probably hunting you. Uh, polar bear. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if you see a polar anything. bear. If you see a polar bear, he's probably they're, stalking they're you like and eat you. Murders, really? Yeah, it's yes. not like a lion. You see lions uh, over there, and you're looking at like if you're in the Arctic, and they'll say that if they see a polar bear, like, oh, commercials shit. are just totally misleading. Yeah, they're like, oh, he's yeah. he's he's gonna come try and get us for sure. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Really? They're purely carnivores. They don't. That's all they eat, and yeah. they hunt, and they it's scarce. scarce. Yeah, it's scarce, so they have to like eat so whatever's in front of every them. opportunity. So explorers say that like if you see a polar bear, oh, he's stalking you. You, like it's, he's coming after you <laughs> yeah, for sure yeah, <laughs> that sucks uh, I know. <laughs> there's a few and they, i was actually yeah, i was reading up on some of this because there was like uh some specific sharks they had found that were just specifically targeting humans that um they ended up tracking and ended up killing but like yeah they got a taste i get and it was all because of some more convenience like a conven more convenient way to to create 
humans as a food source. Mm. Oh. So, but it happens, you know, like every now and then. What would be the scariest uh, thing to get eaten by? It's got to be a shark, right? Because you're in the water. It's, I'd say like a squid or something. Like, you know, the, I, I what? Would, yeah. Like, <laughs> Stop it! You know, <laughs> so, 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 stop hugging. It's me. all re- like hugging and wrapping and tentacles like going in you. You've thought of this before. <laughs> and then, yeah, then, then like, the I beak, like you thought of it too. The beak just starts like that was eating way you. too. Like, that was dude. way too quick. Hella of an fast, an, way too quick of an He's answer. All squid. Yeah, <laughs> for these reasons. Yeah. Boop 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 yeah. boop. Yeah. Dude. dude, they have the weirdest mouths. They're like a beak. It's oh, like. <laughs> Ew. I think, I mean, I've never thought of a squid eating me. <laughs> <You're lying. laughs> That's I think the worst would be something that it actually is 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 not so massive to where it's it takes a while and it's hard. Right. Like that would be the worst. So if I'm not mistaken, a polar bear doesn't kill you. It just starts eating you. If I'm yeah. not mistaken, most animals, predators will kill you. I think that's bears and hyenas jokes. eat you like ass first. That would be horrible. That's a, <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> is that true? To, look it up. Do yeah. hyenas eat prey? Ass- I don't know. Because that doing. would be the worst. Hell bro. bad. Yeah. Because you're alive. Oh, yeah. no. Oh, come on. I mean, yeah. it's one of those canine kind of animals for sure. Why do they and, the water, and the water one, they like the because, because they say drowning is euphoric, <laughs> that would probably work to your benefit, right? You probably get sucked under by a shark with that. I've heard that's actually the best way to go. It is. To, Even though uh, you, that sounds terrifying for me to get to drown, they say that that's one of the best ways. They, that when you go, yeah, you it's like a they rush of chemicals. They don't eat you ass first, but they grab the animal's back, legs, probably. Privates and belly, okay. so kind of is gonna is gonna. I, I know that there's an animal out there that does, though, dude. It just like goes ham. Like, what's right, up, Andrew? You got something or what? Right, ass first. No, I was just gonna say what Sal said. They basically just whatever is easier to bite because yeah, of jaws. to grab. Oh, okay. Have you seen those pictures? I think I've shown you this before. It was like, uh, like, <laughs> like, like, like a, I don't know if they're Somali gangsters or whatever, and they have like hyenas as pets. It's like the ultimate flex. Have you seen that? No, I haven't. Oh yeah, like work? you know how you, like like you can walk around like a pit bull or rot, rot, like these dudes have hyenas. Hyenas. You know wow. what's deceiving about a hyena is that in, when you see them, they're much bigger than what they used to. They're see huge. Them. Yeah, yeah, they're big. That'll kill your dog. Fast. Yeah, I used to always see them like on like the National Geographic and be like, why they, they're they're so scrawny and this type of because they're next to lions. Yeah, and the, and but when they're by themselves, they're big dogs. You know what I'm saying? Big dog. <laughs> I don't even know if they're part of the dog family. Are they? Yeah, they're part of the dog family. Hyenas are. Yeah, I think. So. So really, yeah, I think yeah. so. I don't know. I'm not. Doug, fact check that. I would think so. That would be interesting. They're, look, look, they're yeah. Nigerian. Nigerian, like yeah. Nigerian gangs, and they'll walk around with them like they're, they're like their pets. <laughs> yeah. So you, th- you think you're a badass with your pit? Oh, <laughs> you dude walks by at the hyena. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there you go. That's the first one right there. Are hyenas dogs? Yeah. Let's see what it says. You're Let's, probably right. Uh, are not. Oh, they're not. Of the dog or cat. Look family. at that. Dog or cat. So what are they? Yeah, they're just. Um, they're part of the hyenaid family or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Spot. We, well, what else? Ard Ard Wolf. Yeah, I don't. know. What's an Ard? What's an Ard Wolf? That's weird. Because and the Ard Wolf. Yeah, I, I did not know that. Hmm. Yeah, that would totally. You would assume that, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Um. No, I. I kind of knew that. I kind of knew that. Yeah, I did. I mean, that's why did. I asked the you, question. You challenged it. I would. Mm-hmm. I would have been wrong for sure. Because I know, that. like the dingo, right? That's a dog, and like there's lot. There's there's other, but that's yeah, not coyote. A, is not a dog. What? That's yard wolf. No, coyote is oh. a dog. It is? Yeah. Coyote's not a dog. I thought it was part of the wolf family. The well, wolf is yeah, part of dogs. Is a wolf part of the dog yeah, family? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. where dogs came from. Yeah. I knew yeah. that. Origin. So I guess I'm being stupid now. Yeah, I lost yeah. my. Yeah, you were doing good. I was cool. You were doing good for a minute. You got a cocky dude. We'll edit that out. <laughs> should have just mic dropped it. Let me talk to Doug real quick. Let's cut that out real quick. Rewind. Oh, I messed up on that one. Well, I can follow up to one because that one spider fact was completely wrong. I can follow up to one because that one spider fact was completely wrong. I launched last time when I was talking Oh, that guy that was splicing? Yeah, the spider like centipede. Oh, that's right. Combo. Oh, that scared the shit out of me, though, you guys. I lost sleep over yeah. that, so I had to bring it up. Uh, but yeah, this one was just creepy, and I was like, why? Like, sometimes you just, you wonder, these scientists, like, what spawned this idea, what, right? Yeah. What did they do? So they took, like, dead spiders, and they basically have, like, this electrode probe thing that's, like, suspending them. And they were doing these experiments where they would, like, like add electricity and it would like open the legs out and to where they could like grab an object and pick it up. And it was like twice, if not like three times their body weight. Uh, and then they were just doing an experience where they, it would like act as like one of those claws that you go to grab toys, you oh. know, from the, and I was like, why? Like, what's the, what are we accomplishing here? It was just so creepy to watch well, too. There's a whole video. Why are they it. doing that? I don't know. What's going on? Oh, anyway, uh, well, here's a, yeah. here's a terrible reanimating transition. spiders, terrible transition from spiders. But, uh, 
Butcher Box. They're, they got some. Oh, well, speaking of that. Hey, yeah, actually, I was going to yeah, ask you. Courtney texting me. Yep. Right? Wow. That's the, uh, yeah. Both of you guys' wives yeah. text me. She, all the time. she does that? Okay. Yeah. It's news to hey, me. don't throw my wife in there. <laughs> She's not part of this commercial. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She does you too, right? Well, she was asking me about my meat <laughs> that we of, have in our in our Butcher Box. Wow. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I won't tell about you, but Katrina's just, text that we have going. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. No, she was asking about she the. Was like, hey, Justin, what's good on like, Pornhub? It's like those chicken breasts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, your wife Anyways. asked me about the 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 ribs that I always talk about, and so I guess you guys have got some coming down your pipe. So she said that you guys. Do you are guys make those in uh, sweet the yeah, pressure cooker. You've been no, no hyping no. those up so much, slow and I've cook. been telling her about yeah, it. Yeah, slow cook those. Yeah, slow cook those, and they're are I, you guys I, still... they're the best baby back. And I've tried so many different baby they back ribs best. from yeah, they're, they they're the best ones that they make. How you know what? Go ahead. Have you guys tried the the? You guys still eating the nuggets, the gluten free? Yeah, yeah. Ran out. That's, Are you kidding me? Why? Go, what is that? They're it's the really best, good. They're it's really the good. best nuggets Mac, I've ever had in my life. Max lives off of those. That's okay. like a staple meal. Yeah, the breading, whatever that is, it's, it's a little bit it's gluten free. Kind of, it's kind of like tater tot kind of yeah. crust. It's so good. It is. Yeah, I don't know like any other description. No, they yeah. crushed it because so, I've had a lot of nuggets in my life. Those are the best ones. Yeah, and it doesn't. It's they, well, you know me. They <laughs> crush on like McDonald's <laughs> or nuggets. Restaurants. I had a McDonald's yeah. nugget not that long ago, and I was like, oh, it tasted disgusting. Well, McDonald's nuggets taste. Like uh, like processed. gizzards, yes. They're processed. Yeah. It's gr they're they're gross. Yeah, yeah they're you know. It's, speaking of me, is I just bought it. I know Doug was quick to text me because he likes these toys, and I haven't used it yet. But I posted that I bought it. I just got it, and uh, unfortunately, I didn't realize you had to charge it for eight hours before you use it, or else I would have used it on my last cook. Um, it's I think it's called the meter. The so, meter. Yeah, yeah, it's called the meter, right? It's spelled meat. Right. Yes. M e, -E, -E a t e r. Yes. 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 It's spelled like that, and it's. Uh, I, I think it's partnered with Traeger, or I don't know if it's an actual. Yeah, I, I see them uh, promoting I, it. I bought sure. it through the Traeger website. Oh, you so, did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, but it didn't have Traeger branding on it when I when I opened it up. So I wasn't sure if it was like affiliated with them or what it is. But they're basically it's they're they're basically Bluetooth thermometers. And so you, I see this. Oh, so it just communicates to your phone. Yeah, dude. Oh, and it, bro. Now it do actually, you leave it in while you cook it? Wow. It's it, yeah. Oh, so, so you cook it with it in there? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's smart. And, yeah, instead of having to go check it. And, and it has everything you could possibly think of. So if you're doing poultry, you're doing beef, you're doing like whatever meat, and then what? how you want it, how you want it, it will tell you what temperature you need to pull it at. And then it's all digital. So I just got to look down at my phone. It's like, oh, I'm at 112. Okay, still keep going. What? Oh, yeah. All, is it all they need is a little camera it was like a, It's not that's... cheap. So you can get the single one. I got the four pack. The four pack was probably... I don't know, hundred. That's uh, smart. Don't quote me, but I think it was like one seventy to two hundred dollars or something. Oh, like that. it's Bluetooth though, huh? Yeah. So you're just gonna get cancer meat. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> <laughs> what is oh, that one? That was a hundred bucks what? just for the single, but I got the four pack. Um, so I, I mean, I so Traeger already has a. I, I already, I have a, I have a dual uh, thing, so I can put, I can plug mine in. But then I got to go to over to it, and mine's like really long. I don't like it the way it is, so I always feel like it's not getting a good read, not as precise as I like. Everybody when they saw me post this said it, it's the best thing they've ever had. Really? They said, like you, but will, yours came with four, huh? You, you got four in them. Yeah. So you could buy a four pack. See so, this though? Look at you could do it in the crock pot. You can do it in wow. the oven. You can yeah, use you it. Can leave it in there. Like yeah, oh, that's crazy. Yeah, you wow. just so I have I have the one that you can leave in right now, but it's it's and it's connected to the Traeger, and I can only use it on my Traeger. So if I do my gas grill, I don't have something for this. Where now I'll be able to do huh. this. Yeah. Oh, Smart. I might check. Well, I'm going to check this out. Yeah, it's definitely because I suck at barbecuing. And here's the thing, Sal. It's like because you know there for a long period of time I sucked at barbecuing too. Once you figure out, trying to make me feel better. I am so because you, you you can get good at this. <laughs> you can, you can do Once that. you, especially with the tools that they have now, it's almost like cheating. I mean, yeah. it really is. Like it my is cheating, really. My brother-in-law, who's like a purist, yeah. gives me so much shit for my Traeger grill and my thermometers and all stuff like that. He's just like, this, this is, blah, blah, blah. you know, he barks <laughs> about it. Like, it's like, I'm like, I don't give a shit. You know what I'm saying? I want good meat. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I'm not trying to prove to anybody <laughs> that I'm like a grill <laughs> master. You know what I'm saying? So once you figure out like how you, how Jessica, how everybody likes their, their meat, whatever it is you cook, you're done. Like, then you just know that that's the temperature that you pull at and, and you, and you know, it takes a few times of cooking whatever types of cuts of meat. Like I know, like I pull Katrina's cause she likes it. So ruined. She want I'll wait all the way till like one forty. I pull my meat at one thirty two, <laughs> wow. And then I have a sear and then it's like, and then it 
then you 100 percent time you're perfect wow so yeah wow. It helps even somebody who's Good not deal. a I mean, check it can out. i just say how happy i am that butcher box has thick cut steaks now oh yeah like ribeyes yeah. Uh, oh they went thick cut now they have yeah man they, look at your uh your box and next time order some thick cut Oh, pieces. I'm gonna text Katrina oh, that right now because 100%. why I went away from the meat because I don't like how the meat's thin cut sometimes, but it's they have thick cut. They have huh? thick cut now. Yeah, oh, wow. I don't mind thin. You know, you can make thin good if you if you cook well, it. You real can. Fast. You have to be very you, careful. Here's what we do. Have you ever done this before? You take a plate, olive oil and uh, oregano and salt, and then you put the meat on the oregano and salt. Although mm -hmm. it's really good, Italian style. Yeah. yeah, try it out. Shout out! I want to shout out the book that I talked about last time: Nonviolent Communication. Mm. A great, great book. Here's what's crazy about it, okay? And I, it's so funny that I started reading this now because I just, maybe a few weeks ago, was watching this video and reading about how language is what shapes human thought. Without language, we're actually unable to think the way that we do, mm. to perceive the future and the past and to categorize things. So language shapes our thoughts and our thoughts shape our language, but our language shapes our thoughts more than anything. Without language, we think very much in terms of feelings and what's happening now, and that's it. We don't think in terms of future and categories and people and stuff like that. So this book talks about language and how it shapes the way you view the world and how to change that language and how it changes your perception of things. It's a yeah, very, 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 very smart book. Electrolytes help your muscles fire. They help hydrate your body. They're good for you, and we don't get enough of them. Well, anyway, there's a company called LMNT that makes an electrolyte powder that has no artificial sweeteners, no sugar. You add it to your water, and it has the right amount of sodium for hardworking fitness fanatics and people who don't consume heavily processed foods and people with a low-carb diet. All those people need more sodium, typically, in their diet. LMNT provides that with no calories. Go check them out. Get yourself a free sample pack. Go to drinklmnt.com forward slash mind pump. And if you get an order there on that link, you'll get a free sample pack. All right, back to the show. First question is from Burke himself. I would love to hear how each member of Mind Pump is currently training right now. What program does their trainer training most closely resemble? Okay. I appreciate uh, when people say it that way, where it's like, what program does it most yeah. closely? Because we're, we're going to, I mean, we're going to individualize it. Mm -hmm. ourselves uh because of our experience stuff right now my program most closely resembles anabolic advanced Ooh, so yeah i'm following that that type of a a program and programming um and i probably switched to that i'd say i want to say maybe three weeks ago um because i just now i just noticed really great results from the, the i have to also make sure i'm rested um and well fed when i do that um because of the just the intensity and volume of it but um, I love that alternating, you know, kind of volume style training with the, with the intensity and, uh, you know, failure type training. It's, uh, it works pretty well. Mine yeah. probably most closely resembles, um, urban hip hop from beach body. <laughs> 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 I like that. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, uh, no, I'm probably gyrations. Like, uh, mass 15 right now is probably the, what I'd say yeah. I am. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm probably, only are you doing it here at home? A little bit of both. Okay. Wherever I can, wherever I can. Right now, we're in the middle of this transition of this work week, so I'm having a bit of a challenge with um, when I'm doing that. These uh, these days tend to be a little bit longer than what they used to be. So I used to train here right afterwards or train at home, and I'm I'm finding myself not doing that, and then I'm cramming it in the last last three or four days. So um, yeah, I'd say it's like a maps fifteen esque, you mm -hmm. know. And then there's days where I have like a like on the weekend where I have a full hour, and then I'll probably put an hour work in. So if if maps fifteen and a maps so like two lifts, two three lifts a day. That yeah, two three lifts, but not daily because I'm only getting like three or four times in. So it looks like two big lifts, and then I have a day or two on the weekend. Sometimes that looks more like maps anabolic. Oh, I see. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I'd say a maps anabolic day, and then maps fifteen when I can't get the full mm -hmm. hour type of workout, and it's kind of what it looks like. Yeah, I'd say for me, it kind of resembled um, old time strength initially. A lot of grip, intensive stuff, overhead carries like um a lot of that kind of stuff um <clears throat> in bent press and then i kind of moved on to do a little more performance um phase two type of work so a lot a lot more like functional stuff because i was trying to in get more athletic again and be able to move effectively and, and get up and run so the whole running thing took a bit for me to like get everything um sort of 
uh, back in order and, and stabilize in order for me to like put that kind of intensity, uh, cardiovascularly. So, um, I did that for, I don't know, maybe like a month and a half or two. And then now I'm back to like maps 15, like, like pretty, pretty consistently similar to that with interruptions of like suspension trainer work, uh, Olympic rings, mm. you know, but like, I'll do that in combination with barbell training. Oh, so you, 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 our workouts probably look similar. Cause I actually use the suspension trainer every once in a while. I'll throw in there like external rotation with my, like, uh, or, or W's or whatever. I'll throw that in there and some tricep extension when I do some arm work, which I really do. I seem to like never miss squatting and pull-ups in a week like if i were to assess like the really? last like six months to a year is that because yeah. they feel the best for squatting you? is yeah, i just feel like that gives always. me like the biggest bang for my buck yeah. like squatting and then and then the pull-ups like just seem to like keep me feel like feeling strong overall yeah, yeah, yeah. right and, and that's not me trying to make let's not compare like oh this exercise technically is more like i know a deadlifting is is uh gonna give me more results as far as overall muscle on my body if i were to compare it to a pull-up but pull, being able to pull up and, and and pull myself up and control that like and get a good amount of reps be, and being able to squat mm -hmm. good weight something about that makes me feel like sh still feel strong yeah so overhead I, press for me in that regard is always one that i and then i would say I that's do. probably my third that i make sure that's in there and then the rings because of the really deep kind of dips i can do uh, and it's the hardest thing I think out of anything I do. I feel strong if I'm like, oh, I can easily get like ten. Sometimes I can only get like five, and I'm like, ah. Yeah. Like, what I what sauce. I feel like if we do what you just so pull up, overhead press, and squat. If I never fall off of those three movements in a week and maintain relatively and throw in some other stuff, here yeah, right. it, or not like I miss. That's all I do. Those three, mm -hmm. and, and then I get back into like a rhythm. When I get back in the rhythm, I feel like so I don't have a lot of fall off. I don't feel like I'm like, wait, whereas if you stop doing like everything and then you come back, it's like, oh my God, I'm so weak. Yeah. Get back to square one. Whereas if I maintain my pull-up strength, I maintain my squat strength, I can maintain my overhead press strength. I, I, can, I feel like I can come back to a lot of movements that I haven't done in a month or two and still feel you, okay. You know, there was a popular routine in the 90s. Uh, I, can, I can remember the guy's picture. I don't remember the name of the routine, but he would sell these books out of the back of the, ma of the bodybuilding magazines. And his routine was based off of uh, squats, dips, and pull-ups. Mm -hmm. There was dips, pull-ups, and squats, and you know he would, you know, he had, there's a picture of them all, you know, pumped up or whatever. He would talk about, and you know, if you think about it, there's no such thing as like the perfect only three exercises, uh, but um, those aren't bad. I think if we're doing a really bad. good pushing, we're splitting that up, yeah, yeah, good pushing movement, a good you know pulling movement, a good kind of squatting movement. You've got a lot of bases covered by doing some I, I think that's what it is yeah. is that it's it, of course it's not ideal for making moves and i wouldn't have my client do any of this stuff like that but when i think of like you know what i always talk about which is doing the, the the least amount possible right it to elicit change or even to maintain in this case that's all i'm looking to do is like i just don't want to lose a bunch of muscle that i've built and so how, what what movements uh, do I, I know keep the most on i me? just came up with a, such a great product idea i'm not even sure if i want to share it, <laughs> copy it. i swear to god i'll tell you guys after, after right, the podcast right, cool. doug how's your workouts what are you doing back on anabolic yeah uh Good so old faithful yeah so i last uh time i went through the maps 15 and then i just kind of go back and forth between other programs and maps anabolic so i'm on phase two of anabolic i'm only doing the twice a week right now so the last time I did anabolic, especially after phase one, I was feeling a little beat up. And so I said, I'm just going to try, you know, two workouts a week and see how that goes. Better. I'm really liking it yeah. for me right yeah. now. Yeah. That's actually how I started with you, Sal. It is. It is. Twice a week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Next question L is from LAPD. Are full body or body part splits optimal for hypertrophy, hoping sets and frequency equal? Not sure okay. So sets and frequency being controlled okay. is what they're saying. So for most people, full body is going to be superior. And there's a few diff different reasons why. One is if you miss a workout, which everybody's going to do which here and the there. Which is the main reason in my opinion. You're, you're, you're not going to miss an entire body part, right? You've already hit your whole body twice that week. You miss one workout. Okay, no big deal. Body part splits, mm -hmm. <clears throat> what you tend to see it with a trend is that people tend to miss, if they do miss a workout, it's always that body part they don't like, like legs or you know, arms or whatever they don't like. And so you start to see imbalances uh, that are created. The second reason is, uh, and this is just my argument, I think there's a better systemic muscle building signal that's sent from three workouts a week than there are from five workouts a week. And a full body exercise, you're also more likely to pick 
the big bang for your buck exercises. Yeah. If I'm going to do nine sets for chest in one day, it's probably not going to be nine sets of the most effective chest exercises. I'm probably going to have at least five or six or three Ooh. sets of. Then you get in that conundrum too, of like where do I put the deadlift? You know, right. if it's back, if it's not back day, or if it's leg day, or if it, yep. I don't know. I too, I, I think that a lot of times people overdo leg day, and so that was like one of my biggest qualms uh, with with split versus like uh, total body. It's just I like to touch legs each time in my workout because it just for me I feel like I'm putting out a bigger signal. I feel like my whole yeah. body is generating more force. Uh, which then, you know, and then to the recovery time in between, those are two arguments I always make. Along those lines, I agree. I think that people, when you run splits, you're more likely to overdo intensity on yeah. a muscle group. Yeah. And I think when you have to do full body broken up two or three days a week, it it modifies or manages people's intensity better because you're not going to go destroy one muscle group and you have to do train the whole body. So you have to be uh, uh, more conservative with the amount of intensity that you put forth towards each exercise. And the hardest transition is getting a body part split guy to go, Hey, it's okay that you you don't feel destroyed after that, you know, three sets of squats. And now we're moving on to something else. Like it's okay and normal to feel that way. And then getting them to commit to training that way with, you know, three days a week, uh, full body versus splitting the body up because this, the body part split, it kind of, it promotes this destroy a muscle group yeah. or two muscle groups. And just, I think too many people overreach their body is constantly in this recovery trap and they're not recovering and they don't actually adapt and grow. Yeah. And so in my experience, people always end up doing better with the full body and especially to your point, Sal, I know with my own, we were just talking about our training right now and I've, I'm always inconsistent and like when I don't have like a major goal and I'm just training for health, like I really ever have th this five weeks in a row of exactly the same like consistency, just not how I train. It's like I train when I can and when it fits in and do what I need to do. And full body is just the best way to do that because there's a lot of times where I just got back from a four day trip where I was out. So like that, and so I got one workout in, you know, and it's so great that I got one workout in and I, I hit everything. So it's like those type of things I think are, are important. To also keep. for muscle and hypertrophy, especially for strength in particular or power, Fatigue is the enemy. And so how many of the sets that you do in one workout where it's all chest, right, or all back, how many of those sets are going to be quality, right, versus splitting up those sets throughout the week? If you do three sets three days a week, that's nine total sets, those three sets you do each time tend to be more quality, right, versus nine sets by the time you get towards the end of the workout, it becomes more about just getting the pump and, you know, fatiguing the muscle type of deal. So you'll see power... And strength athletes often train with more frequency than bodybuilders do who tend to hammer a body part all in one day. Um, and I think strength athletes, for most people, have more have better programming than bodybuilding. Now, there are those cases where you have those genetic anomalies and freaks and all that stuff. And, and that's why splits can sometimes be better because the tr just the total amount of volume someone's going to train, if they did a full body workout, it might take them two and a half hours. But for most people, full bodies, and this is we've experienced this throughout our whole careers, is just better. Just better. Next question is from Chris E. Daigle. Are peptides and TRT still allowed to claim natural? It's so funny. I think this no. is so funny. No, they're not. <laughs> you know, you know, that, that brings us another one. Like Who another cares? <laughs> yeah. I mean, so okay, so the the question about natural, right? If you're in a competition or a sport that is uh, you know, that, that that has a governing body, they'll tell you what you can and can't use. This whole like, are you natural or not? I think it should be limited to uh, hormones for the most part um, because, I mean, people have used medications, they use all kinds of things that aren't natural. Does that count? It, what about pep, what about uh, anything that improves performance? Like caffeine yeah. and some supplements do, is that still considered you know, natural? Peptides are natural in the body. You know, I, They're I, not drugs, are those considered so? This, this just reminded me of something I wanted to, I'm so glad actually this got brought up because I actually, had this in my notes like a couple of weeks ago to bring up to you guys and share this story with you of why I really can't stand this, this movement on social media of people that do the natural, not natural fake natty stuff. So, you know, Greg Duchette, who's yeah. famous for doing this. Yeah. There's a guy that he, he like called out that he got after his, one of his competitions, like his, his uh, estrogen levels were through the roof. And it was just like, it was so obvious supposedly yeah, that, that he, he did something. Drugs, he was yeah. on drugs. 
So he, he just hammered this guy. And a bunch of people just destroyed his reputation and stuff like that. And a year comes out later that he had Hashimoto's. Oh. And the Hashimoto's is what caused this hormone imbalance to be Dude. way off. And the guy the whole time was actually a natural athlete. And they took him through the ringer on the internet. Because someone like that who's got a it's lot of the club, mob, dude, it's the whole. It thing. is, yeah. and it's just a bunch of fucking bullshit. You yeah. know, like that's somebody's life who got ruined over somebody else who has some Instagram, YouTube clout, and that's yeah. what they. And all they do is sit at home and make videos and try and. You know, let me let me rephrase. Let me let me put this in a in a nice in a different context, just to kind of so people can understand what's going on here. Because I get the whole argument, like. Well, if they're selling products or they're saying they're natural and their workout is what made them look this way, but then we find out they're on drugs, then it doesn't count. All right, let's just imagine a world where all performance-enhancing drugs were legal over the counter. Testosterone, Dianabol, Trenbolone, all the steroids, all that stuff. And then you had ads. You had ads on social media with Ronnie Coleman, Kevin Lavroni in his peak, you know, these massive bodybuilders, whatever. And they're like, take Trenbolone and look like me. Still a lie. It's still a lie. Right. The average person, if they used the same drugs that these pro bodybuilders used, That's right. would not look like these pro bodybuilders. Even steroids won't make you look like these people. So whether they say it's a supplement or a workout, this is how I look the way I do and whatever, you think you're going to look like that person by doing what they do is wrong no matter what. It's always going to be wrong. Even if it's drugs, even if it's drugs, it's wrong. You could give me all the steroids in the world and I wouldn't even, I probably wouldn't even win a state bodybuilding competition. Yeah. That's how big of a role genetics play, which obviously you don't have the same genetics as these people. So just to put these, those things in context, this whole like, are they natural? Are they not natural? Are they whatever? It's like, well, there's also the other point that like we, what Dave Asprey was making when we were talking to, he's like, nobody's natural. All the stuff that we do, all the stuff yeah. that we take and uh, our doctors prescribe to us and medications that we have. and the a, better, a better question is, is there an advantage? Yes, there is an advantage to using ex exogenous hormones. Even testosterone replacement therapy, which I'm on, is an advantage because my testosterone replacement, okay, technically it's keeping it at what would be considered a high normal level. Even replacement is an advantage because my testosterone will never go down whether I lose my sleep, whether I'm stressed or whatever, because it's there exogenously versus natural testosterone, which fluctuates heavily based on lifestyle. So I could get away with a lot more in my lifestyle and not get suppressed testosterone. So it's still an advantage. Is it a huge advantage? Probably not. But is it, is it an advantage? Yes, it is. Next question is from Migo Devin. I'm trying to train for a competition at my local gym where you have to rep your body weight on the bench and squat as many times as you can. Whoever has the most combined reps wins. I'm not sure the best way to approach this. Okay, so the the average person would think the best way to get ready for this is to rep out and continue to work out with your body weight in the bench and squat. And I can see the rationale there. But heavy strength training yeah. Uh, with low reps should definitely be part of the programming. Yeah. In fact, Jack LaLanne, he had a push-up and pull-up record that stood for, I don't know, 50, 60 years. Maybe you could look it up. That was like a thousand. I'd have a day of each yeah. in my week. Yeah. I'd have a day of, of heavy five under, right? So like singles, doubles, triples, up to five reps. And then I'd have a day of AMRAMP. Higher reps. It, yeah, as many as I could of that thing. So you're always challenging so your you need thing. the strength and endurance. Yeah, and then I'd have a, something in the middle, right? Moderate intensity, moderate reps in, in the middle. That It would look anabolic-esque as far as like full body, three times a week. One day would be heavily focused on really, really heavy mm -hmm. weight. One day a week would be the AMRAP. One day in the middle would be something like moderate intensity. And then, and then of course, what our time frame is to get us ready for that. But I think yeah. that would be one of the best ways to get there. So at 42, uh, Jack Lane did the record for push-ups by doing over a thousand of them in 23 minutes. And at 45, he did a thousand jumping jacks and a thousand pull-ups in one hour and 22 <clears throat> minutes. Jack Lane uh, accredited heavy lifting to this feat. He said, they, they asked him like, what was your secret? And you know, did you just do push-ups and pull-ups all the time? He said, no, I did heavy bench presses and weighted pull-ups. So, um, it's definitely a combination and you have to, now you're going to have to adjust your intensity as you do this. If you're training those movements three days a week, uh, one of them would be higher intensity. The other two would be lower intensity. I would keep the heavy day, lower intensity. I would go five, you know, five sets of five reps and yeah, keep the intensity. Volume, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it would be like, uh, I, you know, a weight that I could probably do eight reps with. 
And that's what I would pick for yeah, the Yeah, because you just want to, you, you want the ability to generate that type yeah. of power and force. Like, and that's really like, you do have to incorporate strength because it is a strength feat, but in order to extend that strength feat, you need the endurance, which is the reps that you're practicing. And so like, in terms of the amount of reps that you're doing on the other days, like that's, you know, that's, that's the work that you're trying to increase in terms of the amount of volume. Right, right. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out some of our free fitness guides. We have fitness guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find us on uh, Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam.